I want to bring a message today that's going to be a little different. Is that okay? It's a little bit different. There are, there are a lot of roadblocks in life, even concerning Christian people. Amen. Amen, Avery. A lot of roadblocks in life, aren't there? A lot of them. Uh, we, we could generalize things into the category of sin. We could talk about pride, pride, arrogance, all those things. We could talk about lust. Uh, there are a lot of subjects that we could deal with today, but I want to talk about one that you seldom hear anything about, and that is the roadblock, the subject of mammon. Mammon. How many of you have heard a sermon on that lately? Mammon. Breaking the grip. Breaking the grip of mammon. Now we're going to get into this. Here again, it's not like you hear this message every day. But the more I got into this subject, the more I realized that mammon is crippling America right now. Mammon is crippling America right now. So turn, if you would, to the book of Luke, chapter number 16. We're going to begin shortly in verse number 9. And I, I will be talking today about the influence of mammon, I will even at times probably refer to this as not just the influence, but I will be talking about, I'll use the terminology, the spirit of mammon, I'm not saying that it's a, it's a demon, you can work that, all that theology out, but I will tell you that there is a spiritual aspect of mammon upon the world, upon the United States of America, and upon the church. It's an influence. It's an influence. Now, no doubt it comes uh, packed with a myriad of different uh, spiritual influences in the heavenlies, uh, relating back, of course, to principalities and powers, rulers of darkness, all that. But, uh, but there is a spiritual aspect having to do with mammon that is spoken about in the Bible. Uh, mammon is, uh, we have that word, but the Greek word is mammonus, which talks about and speaks about wealth personified. Not just wealth, don't misunderstand me this morning, but wealth personified. Um, We've talked about this recently, personification in the book of Proverbs and how something can, it would seem, influence you or speak to you. Uh, wisdom, even as we've looked in the book of Proverbs, is referred to as she sometimes. And so how many of you have ever had a she talk to you? Uh, yeah, and you'll admit it. Brother Rodney, have you ever had that happen? Brother Rodney's got the scars on his head to prove it. With the Denosa slaps, I'm looking up in the balcony to see if I'm getting a laugh or a, or a, or a frown from Sister Judith, but uh, she's laughing, so that's good. So it's sim personification simply means that a word can take on the characteristics of a person. Okay, can take on the characteristics of a person. It would be like me saying, or someone saying, hope will carry you through this. Okay, hope, eh, hope's not going to literally pick you up and carry you, through, carry you through a storm in life. It would be like, it would be like someone saying that opportunity came knocking at my door. 
you didn't necessarily get a knock on the door. But you know what I'm talking about today. It's, it's how uh, things are personified. So when we look today at mammon, realize that mammon is an influence, and I'm going to describe, I'm going to tell you what it is, but it is an influence over the lives of people in the world. And again, I will share with you that mammon, I believe wholeheartedly, has a great hold even on the people of God in America today. And so the title again is that uh, I'm really hoping that today for every hearer that we can break the grip of mammon. Amen. So let's go to Luke chapter number 16, verse number 9. The words of Jesus, and you're not going to get this immediately. Everybody's not going to get this when I read the text. So I'm going to explain, okay? I'm going to try to break this down. Uh, you probably all read it, but maybe you didn't get it when you read this, but we're going to help you out today. Jesus said, and I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you've not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you've not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. No servant. I want you to remember that. There's a delineation there. Uh, you're either going to serve one or the other. You're not going to serve both at the same time. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. And Jesus said again, he said, you cannot serve God and mammon. He makes it very, very clear. Verse 14 says, Now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, now the Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, he said, You are those who justify yourselves before men. But... God knows your hearts. I talk about the heart a lot in ministry, probably more today than I ever have over the years. How is your heart? Because so many things are a heart issue. But he says, God knows, Jesus Christ said this. He said, God knows your hearts. He knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men, what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The word mammon appears four times in Scripture, it's three times here in the text that I've read to you this morning. Also appears in Matthew chapter number six. And most people, uh, when I uh, use the word mammon, they automatically think that I'm talking about mammon equals money. A lot of people, there, most people probably, oh, the preacher's talking about mammon, so mammon must be money. So first of all today, let's, let's just dig into this a little bit and answer the question, what is mammon? We've already discovered that the word mammon is personified. It is a personified Aramaic word for riches and wealth. Are y'all with me this morning? Mammon happens to be the name of a Syrian god, the god of riches. It came from Babylon. The word Babylon means sown in confusion. One of the, one of the purposes, uh, one of the products of the devil is that there is confusion and he tries to get us 
from seeing the truth of God, the truth of God's Word. This Word is powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's why we need the Word of God in our lives. But when I think about Babylon, I also immediately think about the Tower of Babel. Surrounding the Tower of Babel was a prideful, was an arrogant spirit that did not need God. They thought that spirit would make people, influence people into thinking, you do not need God. I've said this many times in, in funerals over the years. There comes a place in everybody's life where they realize, I need God. I need God in my life. I'll never forget the words of Brother Jerry Meadows, Reverend Jerry Meadows, Evangelist Jerry Meadows, Pastor Jerry Meadows. After he, he spoke with me one day as he was in the process of and had been planting a church in a certain city, a large city in northwest Arkansas. And we, it was tough. It was very, very tough. It was surprising to him. Uh, I know it was because he came here even and spoke and talked about uh, his vision and what was going to take place and all the people that were going to come in and all of that. But he said that he soon figured out that the mindset of the people was in that area of northwest Arkansas was this. They did not need God. They had good jobs. They had money. They had friends. They had family. They had good times. And they were happy where they were at. And they did not need God. And they did not need the church. That's sad. The influence of mammon. Now think about the Tower of Babel. These people, they had the idea that they could build a tower to heaven. They thought that they could get to heaven on their own. They thought they could get everything they need in life without God. You say, well, preacher, that's nothing that could come into the church because we are all 100% on fire with God. We're, we're just happy in Him. We don't need anything else in life. Really? Really? Amen? The spirit of mammon is centered upon and around and in arrogance and, it, and in pride. It says, you don't need God. You need money. You need things. Sister Renee, I almost preached my sermon this morning. You don't need God. You need money. You need things. You need possessions. Stay with me today. Mammon tries to replace God with things. Mammon is not even satisfied with being equal with God. Mammon has to rule. What did Jesus say? You can't serve both. You can't serve both. That's the very, pride is the very sin that got Lucifer kicked out of heaven. The very same. Now let me try to make something very clear today. I've sort of alluded to this already, but mammon is not money. Okay? It is an attitude that shows up where money resides. It is a spiritual influence. Your money and my money will either be controlled by the Spirit of God or by mammon. Your money will either be blessed by God or it will have a curse on it. Amen. Amen. If the spirit of mammon, if I can say that, the influence of mammon resides and presides over your finances, how can God bless them? It's so funny when you say anything in church about money. <clears throat> Hair stands up on the back of some people's necks. <laughs> you know, I've known people who even believe strongly in tithing, but it was, it was like an obligation. And so they gave grudgingly 
even of their tithes. I've known people, <laughs> I wasn't really around back then, but I won't call the church now, but uh, uh, my siblings that are in here, we had an uncle one time, uh, the pastor told me this story of a church that he attended, I won't call his name either, uh, but anyway, he came to the pastor and he said, so I've got $5,000 tithes that I'm fixing to give. He made a point to go there and tell the pastor, I've got $5,000. Now that's a lot of money. This was probably in the 70s. That was a lot of money. That's a lot of money right now. He said, I've got, pastor, I've got $5,000 tithes. But he said, now what I want you to do with that <laughs> is to fix the parking lot. I've known people at churches in this, this town because I, I'm connected with several of the churches in various ways over the years. And I've, I've known people who would almost brag about withholding their giving in the church because they didn't like the way the pastor was preaching or, or the way he was handling something else. And so they would withhold their giving so that the pastor would have to leave. Don't you know that made Jesus Christ happy right there? Boy, oh, y'all are quiet today. Don't you know God was pleased with that? I bet he danced a jig in heaven. Probably not. That's the spirit of mammon. It's the spirit of mammon. When our money is entrusted to the Holy Spirit, that's when Malachi says that it's multiplied and the devourer can't touch it. Money, though, that has the spirit of mammon on it is cursed. Money that has the spirit of God on it can't be touched by the devourer. Amen. Amen. But money that has the spirit of mammon on it in its grip will be devoured by the enemy. Amen. Amen. Mammon, uh, dare I say it, Mammon is kind of like politicians of this day. They promise you everything but deliver nothing to you. Amen. Amen. Mammon, as a matter of fact, and it's, it's, no, it's no surprise when you figure uh, the influence of the devil uh, on it, but mammon is a liar. And mammon, though, here's what's unique. Mammon promises you things that only God can give you. Only God can give you. Jesus said here, he said, you cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and mammon. So that's interesting. Look at that. Mammon is looking for servants. It's looking for servants. Mammon will promise you security. Oh, if you just had more money, I'd feel so secure in my life. I'd feel so happy in my life. I'd feel so blessed in my life if I just had more money. I'll tell you, ladies and gentlemen, what we need today is more of God in our lives, more of our focus on Almighty God. Give Him praise today. Well, preacher, you don't understand. If I had more money, I would have financial security. I'd have peace in my life. I'd have peace in my home. I'd have peace in my wallet. When I go to Walmart, everything I would need would be right there available. And I'd give God praise for it. No, you're still trusting in your wallet instead of God. So that commercial on TV, what's in your wallet? It ought to be the blessings of God. Amen. So we don't need mammon. Let me be very emphatic today. We don't need mammon at all. You and I need God today. Amen. Mammon is an influence, again, that promise you, promises you what only God can give you. Let's look at the text again. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. Are y'all getting this or y'all need me to stop right now? Y'all getting this? 
No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. There are a lot of people, Brother Larry, that literally despise God over finances. There's a portion of their heart that just despises God over their finances. Why isn't God doing this? Why hasn't God given me this? I really need this. You know what? We need to do what Sister Bonnie Lida's mama said before she passed away. We need to trust God. Amen? Amen. But if I'm understanding this verse correctly, Jesus seems to be saying that if you despise the one, it's because you're being loyal to the other. I will tell you, I despise mammon. Amen. If you love mammon and if you love things, if you're dependent upon things, it's because there's some area of your heart that despises God. So many people have served mammon. This is interesting. And then when mammon did not provide what they thought it was going to, we despised God. You missed a real good place to shout right there, folks. Amen. Do you realize today that the Antichrist, how many of you know what we're talking about when we're talking about the Antichrist? By the way, we are in the end times. Amen? Amen. The spirit of mammon is strikingly similar to the Antichrist. The Antichrist is not going to rule by nuclear war threats. The Antichrist is going to come and entice you with what you can have that you can't get anywhere else, that you can't buy or sell. Revelation chapter 13 verse 16 says, He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave. So it's everybody, okay? to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. You know, we're all wound up about nuclear war and Russia and Iran, and we're all wound up about all of this. The Antichrist is far more concerned that you understand that he's the boss and he's going to control whether you eat and where you, whether your little babies eat or not. There's coming a day when the mark of the beast is going to be available. It's going to be available. And those who bow down, I believe this with all my heart, those who have bowed down to the spirit of mammon will be first in line. Amen. Mammon says, you won't be able to provide for your family without me. Reality is this. Only God provides for us. When we are serving him and he is our Lord and Savior, we can spend, you know, people can spend their entire lives working their fingers to the bone. Do I believe in hard work, good work ethics? Absolutely. But they can spend their whole lives trying to get ahead, trying to get ahead, instead of just turn it over to God. Amen. Many times, mammon will tell you one of two things. I either need God to come through for me, or I need someone to give me some money. One or the other. Either I need God to come through for me or I need somebody to give me some money or else I'm not going to make it. What a statement of faith. Amen. Mammon wants to compare himself to God, but according to what I find about Jesus, he never told one leper, he never told one prostitute, he never told one blind person or one demon-possessed person that money would fix their problems. He never did that. Can you imagine somebody coming up to Jesus and saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. 
And Jesus looks at him and says, you know what you need? You need more money. <laughs> no, we need God. Amen? We don't need more money. We need God. So we don't necessarily need all the stuff that it seems this world has to offer. We need more of God's influence on what we do have. Amen? Amen? Is money evil? No, money's not evil. Money, money is neutral. Money is a tool. Money is neutral. It's neither good nor bad. The love of money is where the problem comes in. The love of money. Money is a tool that's either blessed of God or cursed by Satan. Here again, the love of money is the root of all evil. People misquote that all the time. When we serve money, it holds us in its grip. When we serve money, we are held at its mercy because the longer mammon holds on to us, the more we succumb to its pressure and the feeling that we have to have it. We'll talk to you for just a minute now. That's one reason that the United States of America is in a serious crunch today. Amen. This nation is in the grip. I almost feel prophetic or something here. This nation is in the grip, Braxton, of mammon. It's in the grip of mammon. We have served and we do serve money and mammon. The influence of it all upon our lives. That's why Washington, D.C. is in a mess right now. Amen. It's in a mess right now. Let me give you some statistics. Uh, I pulled these up from way back, well, yesterday afternoon. The U.S. debt is $34.2 trillion. $34.2 trillion. That's 34 with 12 zeros. That's more than most of y'all made all year last year. $34.2 trillion. That translates, Brother Jamie Anderson, to $264,945 per taxpayer just to live in this great United States of America. That does not account for your mortgage. That does not account for your shaving cream. That does not account for your Rolaids. Doesn't account for your car payment, for your rent. None of that. 260, nearly $5,000. That is your part. And our young people that are growing up right now, you're about to grow up. Are you already working, Braxton? You're already paying taxes? Then now that belongs to you. What's something that we have to look forward to? $34.2 trillion and climbing. I, I went online and I, I looked to see, you know, just current stats. And it's, it's climbing. But I don't want you to be startled by that $34.2 trillion that we have of debt. We have good news. We have $4.7 trillion in federal tax revenue, Brother Lindell. Amen. I, I suppose I'm sounding the alarm this morning that God's people need to come out from among the world and be separate. We need to trust God with everything that we have. We need to trust God with every, uh, you need to trust God with everything that belongs to you Everything is His, amen. We are, we are here as, uh, should be here as good stewards of what God has given us, amen. Give God praise today if you would. America is considered one of the most prosperous nations. Everybody who is coming across our southern border, everybody is not up to no good. Now they're still coming across illegally, but there, there are some of them that they're, as a matter of fact, one just the other day I saw on the news, 
uh, I think it was a lady, she was so happy she was coming here to get a job. My heart kind of went out to her. You know why my heart went out to her? Was because she didn't know what she was going to find in the United States of America. She was probably going to find homelessness. She was probably going to find struggle. Go ahead. When she goes up there to New York City or to Chicago or wherever or to, to California, she's not going to find prosperity probably outside of God. But they believe they're going to. We're living in a country today that is... We're living in a country today that is being propped up by a false sense of security, propped up by the influence of mammon. And one of these days, folks, it's going to come crumbling down. And dare I say it, when it comes crumbling down, many of God's people are going to go falling down, crumbling down with it. We have served credit cards, we have served banks. We have served mortgage companies. We have served, why, did, why do we serve all of those things? Because we find those things necessary. Mammon wants us to find those things necessary. You say, are you condemning me for having a credit card? No, not, not at all. But if we're serving credit cards or we're serving this or serving that, we're walking into something that is meant to enslave us. Dave Ramsey, um, I like his program. Uh, he, he really, in my opinion, tries to help people. He uses this verse all the time. Proverbs chapter 22, verse number 7. The rich rules over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. Now, the version says, it's what he says all the time, the borrower is slave to the lender. The borrower is slave to the lender. Mark that down somewhere in there. The borrower is slave to the lender. Remember that the next time you get tempted to go into debt for something that you don't have to have. There are people in this room right now who could tell you their experiences of going into debt for things they didn't have to have and it was an unwise decision, but they did it anyway and so they suffered dearly for it. Some of us that are a little older, I'm getting pretty old. Some of us that are a little older, you could tell us horror stories about the things you got into because of debt. Can somebody give me an amen? Thank you, Brother Larry. Luke 16, 9, Jesus said, And I say to you, make friends for yourselves. Let's look at this. Make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Jesus' words here were addressed to various degrees of wealth, people of various degrees of of wealth and undoubtedly their wealth had not been attained strictly for the purpose of building the kingdom. It seems that Jesus is telling them that even though it may have been obtained from a not so good uh, reason, you need to be good stewards of what you have. I don't know what you've been through or what you're going through now, but be a good steward of what you have beginning today. All right. Amen. 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 Be a good steward today. He's telling us, touch somebody's life Amen. today so that after you fail or after you die or after you sleep, you'll have built up treasure in heaven. Was that really important? Was it important enough that Jesus said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust can destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where the neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not, 
I hope you got that, where thieves do not break in and steal. Can you imagine a thief trying to steal something from God? In each of our lives, we possess money and things that the enemy wants to use for evil purposes or that the enemy wants to just lay dormant. Amen. But Jesus says, it's time to use those things that you possess, that you are stewards of, use them for kingdom purposes. Here in the church, we support today's Mission Sunday, by the way. We support uh, 40-something missionaries, missionary endeavors around the world, uh, locally and statewide, nationally, globally. We support 40-something missionaries and, and uh, various endeavors. Why do we do that? We do that because we're not so focused on, we're not so focused on mammon. We're not so focused on what we have. I, I could let me tell y'all something today. There are churches that I am very aware of because I deal with, uh, I, I have oversight over fifteen churches. There are churches today that have stored up their money for years and years and years and years. I'm talking about a lot of money. A lot of money. They stored it up. Why they're stored it up, I cannot tell you. I cannot tell you today. I have never once saw a hearse pulling a U-Haul to this day. Not one time, amen? But they store it up. I, I need to ask some of these churches, I guess. I need to say, what are you storing this up for? I need to ask them, Brother Lindo. I need to just get straight with them. What are, you, what are you planning to do with all this money when there are missionaries struggling to get on the field? When there are children that need food in your community? There are teenagers that need somebody to reach them in your town, in your city, and what are you planning to do? Well, it's just going to be like osmosis. It'll, it'll just happen. No, it's not going to happen till we break the grip of mammon over our lives. Amen? Amen. I don't mind telling you that if, if, we had, if this church stored up money like churches that I know do. We would never have to come to you, even as we have lately, saying we've got a project in the kitchen, project in kids' church. We'd never have to come and ask, Brother Lindell. Never have to ask. We'd just go write a check. Uh, Fort Myers, Florida. Can't recall the pastor's name. He retired now. Uh, AG, big, big church. I was shocked to listen to this pastor talk one day. I mean, mega church, okay, big. I was shocked one day to hear him talk uh, personally in a small group setting. He said, he said, we, we operate week to week in our church. Now, I can't imagine what their budget is. He said, we operate week to week. Somebody said, well, how can that be? He said, because we're going to sow, and we're going to sow, and we're going to sow into the kingdom. We're going to sow into the kingdom. That's what we do in this church. We sow into the kingdom all the time. Sister Bonnie Lida, she said more than once over the years, she said, I believe, tell me if I'm wrong, she said, that's one of the reasons this church has been blessed over the years, because we've sown into missions. Absolutely, we've sown into missions. You know, I will either stop the blessing of God in my life or I'll let it flow. I'll either be the kill switch to the blessings of God or I'll be the gas pedal to the flow of the blessings of God in my life. Amen? And I believe this. If, 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 I'm, if I channel what God is providing, then He's just going to provide more. Somebody give Jesus praise today. Amen. Let's be kingdom minded. Let's be kingdom minded. Stand with me if you would. It's almost noon. 
Hallelujah. I prayed before service today that that the Spirit of God would speak to us. This is a bit of a different subject. It's a subject that I think the enemy has tried to blind the church with. You say, well, Pastor, did you preach this today uh, so that people would empty their wallets out for the, for the kitchen and for the kids' church? I sure didn't. I sure did not. Preach this today because just, just let those things go out of your mind for a minute. Don't let it go too far, but let those things go. I'm talking about collectively the body of Christ. Much of it has been held in the grip Is anybody getting this? And because of that, it's shutting down. It's, it's stifling, I think, sometimes the move of God. I think sometimes it's shutting down the purposes of God, the plans of God. I'll tell you what else I think. I think we've all probably been guilty of it. kind of bringing it home, isn't it? But I will tell you this, that when that grip of influence is gone from your life, you will find that you operate in a whole new realm. It becomes a blessing to be a part of what God is doing blessing. It becomes a blessing to not begrudge what somebody else has. Y'all ever seen somebody that they, they were they kind of were upset at somebody because they had more than they did? Why God, why don't you bless them so much and you didn't bless me? You're no respecter of persons. That kind of talks from the devil. Can I just tell you that? That kind of talks from the devil. Amen. Let's walk in freedom. This is a subject today about walking in freedom. Bow your head with me if you would. Father, today, thank you for your goodness. Lord God, I pray today as I have prayed prior to this service even that you would help us understand the freedom that comes just by recognizing that you are Lord of our lives and everything that we have, everything that we possess is because we're just simply being caretakers of what you have put in our hands. So Lord God, we purpose, hallelujah, we purpose, Lord, to be good stewards. Hmm. Look at me if, if you would for a minute. Did y'all catch that? We've been, we're caretakers caretakers. This, this couple right over here, they got a, they got a Mercedes Benz. Is that right? Now, I think part of the story you didn't get is it's paid for. Thank you for those three hallelujahs there. They got a new, new to them car that's paid for. Amen. You know what that is? That's not something for them to go around. Y'all see the emblem on the front of my car? That emblem? Mercedes. Mercedes. Yeah. Uh, that's not what that's about. I got a Athena. She got a Mercedes. It's about God. Thank you for that. And I'm going to use it for your glory. I, I think God's going to open doors for them to use it for his glory. Amen. Amen. 
whatever we have. We're, we, we're thankful for that, but we are stewards. We're just stewards. But when we, when we have joined in and coupled in with the, with the influence of mammon, our grip goes together. We're holding on to one another because we're serving mammon because we can't, we can't serve God and mammon has a grip on us, has a grip on us. So let's break it. Let's lift our hands to God right now. Father God, in each of our lives today, may our hearts agree that we're breaking the grip of mammon. Lord, I believe there's going to be miracles happen in people's lives just from, Lord God, this one thing. Lord, we break the grip of mammon. For those watching online today, same thing. We break together. We break the influence of mammon that's had a hold over our lives. It's had a hold over our lives. Hallelujah. Lord God, somebody today we've been praying about, Lord, a, a grandchild. Lord God, I just sense even now that, Lord, there's a miracle taking place. And Lord God, you're moving upon that, that grandchild's life. Lord God, and we thank you for that. I pray, Lord, for this audience today. Lord God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your influence would always be the one that we serve. Your influence would be the one that we obey and we agree together in the mighty name of Jesus and everybody in this house say amen, amen, amen. God bless you.